Well, it's time to go again. Galopin's all locked up. All ready to take a little sleep until the next time and hopefully finish the Wicked Winch and have a license in hand so I can start doing my thousand nautical miles. So, so the great couple weeks here. Uh, back to Switzerland, back to class, the exam, a little bit of uh, reality life back uh, in landlocked Switzerland. Today is inspection time for my little lake boat, my little Sensenet. Um, I have a couple little problems I had to deal with that I wasn't able to deal with uh, before, so now I have to pass inspection again. And hopefully it'll go okay. My brother Stefan's gonna come and help me with a couple little items. One is to reinforce the deck a little bit and seal it better. So I got some uh, Sika silicone to do that. And uh, I also had to plug up a seacock. And I thought it'd be pretty complicated, but I think I figured it out. So hopefully it'll pass inspection. Plus my motor was dead before and I got a new motor, but it's a two stroke and two strokes are only good until 2017. We're good till June. That's what the inspector said. He was cool. Passed the inspection for a while. So we figure out what to do with this boat because it's pretty old and needs a lot of work and don't know if it's worth it. And you can find um, pretty good deals on this lake. People just want to get rid of their boats. So, uh, wow, okay. So this boat needs a nice little cleanup. Um, I'll have to take it out a couple more times. Huh? Can you know the other one? Ah, you're not keeping. Ah! There's some people smoking a joint over there. We can smell it all the way over here. I'm standing here in front of my brother's house, who's been kind enough to let me stay at his place uh, until I get uh, my sailing courses done has the test and can be more permanently on Galopin down in the south of France. I'm here in a suburb near Geneva and uh, I'm doing a lot of studying here for the test that's coming up soon and it is about navigational uh, charting, um, distances, course, uh, direction, etc, etc. It also um, deals with a lot of tidal phenomena and tidal calculations and uh, the exercises and problems that we're solving are as if we were in the North Atlantic of France uh, in the English Channel where there's tides that can vary like around 10 to 12 meters. Now that means that it's three times the height of this hedge here. This is approximately three meters high and if you can imagine a tide that is about 10 to 12 meters high it's like three to four times its height. So it's pretty pretty important that uh, your tidal calculations are correct. So we also have to memorize some um, calculations to uh, allow us to determine what the speed is manually without a lock or speedometer if you want to call it, uh, calculations of uh, how to uh, see a lighthouse at a distance, at a distance when visibility is strong, visibility is weak. This is also a chart to help you determine uh, how far a lighthouse is with different visibility uh, curves. For example here if the visibility is only 2.2 miles, 5.4 miles, etc. So this helps to tell us when we're going to see a lighthouse. Also, uh, we learn to read the lighthouse uh, signals that they emit, whether they're oscillating or flashing, etc., etc., whether they're red, white, or green, and this helps guide you in the right direction in treacherous waters. Uh, for example, there's a spot here on the map, uh, I don't know if you can see where you have to enter a chenal, as they call it, or a way in here 
and the lighthouse helps you guide you in the right direction. So all the stuff is really, really, really important in navigation, um, which I kind of took for granted at first, but now I'm taking pretty damn seriously because um, this, this will help. This will help and, and, and give me the knowledge to, to navigate as safely as possible. And also, it's great to have all the iPads and all that stuff, but nothing is as good as a real paper chart, a real paper map. Um, and, you know, you can always rely on those. The other thing I have to learn is everything in this book. So what will happen on Saturday at the test is that we start at 8.30 in the morning. We have two and a half hours to solve 12 problems, navigational problems, on charts. In the navigational test, you are not only graded on the question that you select from the multiple choice, but how you got to that answer. So you have to show your scribbles and notes and calculations on paper, as well as on the actual map. You have to actually trace it. And then uh, there's a lunch break, and then the next um, part of the day in the afternoon, we have to answer, I think, 120 questions out of the 360 here. Everything from meteorology to uh, safety on board, to parts of the boats, to uh, right of way, right of international signals, international flags, um, buoys, and uh, uh, um, notes, and graphics on the map, etc., etc., as well as a thorough section on health on board or first, first aid. Uh, everything from concussions to broken limbs, cuts, all that kind of um, scary stuff, even fish poisoning, and how to notice the, the symptoms. There's even a question on there is, what do you do if uh, everybody's drunk on board? Well, the answer to that question, you select the person that's least drunk. To, uh, to anchor or to, uh, to dock the boat. After we've done the whole multiple choice part of the test, the 120 questions, then there are four problems to solve on tides. And that'll be the end of the day. And I will find out at the end of the day whether I pass or not. You need to answer 75% of the questions correctly. And this goes for every different section or category. So you can't just fail on charts or fail on questions and do really well something else on something else and, and hope to make it. Everything you do, you have to pass with at least three quarters of the questions right or three quarters of the problem solved correctly. So that's what's up. And uh, next time I see you, I'll either have a long face or be happy as a fucking pig in shit or a sailor on a boat.